Welcome back to Site Tech Under Mountain. This video is going to be a combination of site works and earthworks. We've got a house footprint that's laid out out here. I don't know if you can see these little yellow uh, feathers out here. We've got a surveyor that actually laid out a house footprint, but I did not get a CSV file, any line work, anything. I've got to as built that with my data collector, my TSE 7. What I'm going to do is show you in this video how to create it as a break line and export it as measured data, as a measured line work, if you will. And we're going to put it in this Earthworks machine and import it as, uh, it'll basically come in as 3D line work. So what this line represents here is center of footing, not outside a wall, outside of footing, center line. So as I go, I'm going to actually set up a job site and we're going to shoot it in as a break line and simply throw a third thumb drive in and export it out as measured line work. And then there again, it'll show up in there as a line that can be selected. It's not a design and not an actual surface until I select it. Then we can make the surface width and make it basically diggable. So let's go ahead and get started with a site calibration. Okay, so over here in the corner, I've been provided an actual pin that is my finished floor elevation with a 100, so I'm also gonna use that as my one point calibration. So I'm gonna start up a brand new job site. So we'll call this the uh, house 3D line work. All this is say the same right here, US survey feet, northern easting. I'm not worried about anything else in here because this is all completely an infield design. I'm not working off of control points. I'm not working off of anybody else's information. I'm gonna create it all myself. The base is already running up on another another point, so I don't need to worry about that. I'm going to hit finish, but I do need to create a work order. So we'll call this the uh, kind of the same thing. We'll call it the house 3D lines, line footings. We'll hit finish. I do not have a design, so those are the only two things that I need to set up. Now, this is not a calibrated job site. So I do need a calibration, especially for when I export it to the machine. So I'm going to set up on that pin and I'm going to level up as close as I can get it here. Always spend extra time when you're doing a calibration. So if I go into my menu and go to project setup, I can go to project calibration. And you can see right there, it says a no control point calibration, which means it recognizes there's no control points that have been imported in. So it's a completely different screen. I have a habit for the northern easting and elevation of changing those. So I'm going to do 5,000 and I'm going to do 1,000. And then since I am set up on my 100 right here, I'm going to make this my 100 benchmark, if you will. Go ahead to the next screen, bottom a quick release, and go ahead and start it. Now, as this is doing it, remember that my videos are not basic, not going to be an exact cookie cutter of what you guys are doing. They're just intended to show you different ways of getting from planet point A to point B. So I've done a couple other videos. One that I did is doing this as points. This one I'm doing as line work. The next video is going to be me using the Earthworks excavator 100% to do all this. So once my calibration is done, I can zoom down in and actually see right where I'm at. So all I need to do since I already created a work order is go ahead and start a new line string. I'm going to take the legs off of my pole. I actually have a habit of not walking around with those on if I don't have to. What I need to do is go into my measure type or the roller stuck in the mud there, and I'm going to do a new line. And I'm going to call this CL for center line, house, footing. So I am going to make sure it's a break line. I'm going to leave it as a break line. Go ahead and hit accept. And now all I have to do is basically connect the dots. i got to just go around and shoot every single one of these points right where they're at, creating my line string and boundary. Okay, so now that we're in the machine, all we got to do is put a thumb drive in 
and we got to go to the menu button and go down to data management and we're going to export to machine. We're going to change the very first line to measured line work and we're going to change this to earthworks and right there I've got house 3D line footings. That's the name of the design or the lines that I actually had. So we're going to go ahead and hit accept and it's going to write that information to the hard drive. Data was saved successfully, okay. So now we are done with the data collector. Let's go ahead and set up inside the uh, machine here. From the dashboard, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the um, thumb drive. You don't have to be on the dashboard, you can be anywhere. I'm just, that's where I'm at right now. So in here, we're gonna import files to the machine from USB, hit next. Go ahead and pick the thumb drive and let it go ahead and pick the folder it needs. Now what I'm going to do is drop this drop down bar and see that I've got house 3D line work. So I'm going to hit OK and import or check the box and hit import. All right. Once that's done importing, you're going to get the OK that it imported OK. We hit OK there. We can leave the thumb drive in. We're going to go to job setup. Now under job setup under project, you can go in here and there's house 3D line work. So under the 3D line work, you can go down and you can leave it on design because it still brought it in technically as a design. And we've got house 3D line work, uh, line footings on design. We'll select that and hit apply. Now, as it comes out to the dashboard and we hit start, right off the bat, you're going to have a select 3D line work option on the screen. You can also see, based on the 3D view here, that we have the actual footprint right next to where we're at. Beautiful alignment. All you got to do is this icon at the bottom that's lit up that looks like a pipe here. It's in uh, kind of a yellow color. You touch that one, and that's where you go and select the actual surface itself, or the, the line itself. Tap on it anywhere you want, and then on the width right here, surface width, that's where you can change however wide you want it to be from center line. As you zoom in center line, it automatically defaults to 6.56. If you want to change that to a bigger bigger one for a bigger bucket or a smaller bucket, whatever, like for example, I'll go ahead and just type in eight feet on that. And on the advanced options, I don't need to worry about extending point A and B because I already ended A and B where they actually started. It's auto closed. So we'll go ahead and hit apply. And then on the main screen here, we can go ahead and just move over to the actual footing itself where we know it is out in the field, set down the middle on the bucket. And there we go, we've got a width, and it kind of blurs right here. Um, you'll see those three lines. It blurs because of that surface width and how wide it is. So for an example on that, I can go back into that pipe at the bottom there and change that to a smaller number if I want to, just because of those tight corners. You could go ahead and put in um, four, 0.5 if you want, whatever. I'm just trying to get it a little bit closer to what the bucket is. And there, it kind of tightens that surface up a little bit. But wherever we go now, I'm good to go, except I'm at zero, which is the elevation that that, that line work was actually set at. So we can go ahead and spot a couple different areas in the alignment here. Now remember that line that I shot, the elevation is actually off of my points. So they're made about necessarily be even on the elevations of those. So what you'll have to do here is go into the vertical offset, touch and hold, and you can go in and under this advanced options, you could put in a working surface. So right there, we could put a four foot minus because I know that my footings need a berry here. So they're gonna be about four feet below that 100. So we can go ahead and hit that and hit apply. And now what I've got is an actual working surface that gives me a cut of four feet wherever I go from that elevation, if you will. So I can swing back over here. We can start digging. We got a nice footing. And then the other thing that I turned on here on the offline is my red focus point is in the middle of the bucket. But what I did is on the bottom here, I turned on offline and that gives me an alignment right down the middle of that footing so that I'm, when I'm in those big stretches where maybe my paint mark's gone or whatever, I don't have to necessarily watch it right here on the 3D view to stay on it. I just watch that red line to eyeball it, and then down here at the bottom for offline, I can shoot for zero. And then on the top here, I also turned on the light bars. Your light bars are in the tablet with the gear right here. If you come in here, go to light bars, and you can turn on 
the top one right there in the center. So offline, and now I can I can control myself many different ways. But there you go. Hopefully this video helped on actually creating your own design based off of points shot out in the field. 3D line work shot with the rover, exported out as measured line work, got the calibration, everything to go. Thank you for watching this video from Site Tech Inter Mountain on both SiteWorks and Earthworks. Thank you.